Scrum Masters, welcome to Peaceful Communication. This is section six. This is the main lecture video in this section. There is one other video that I'd like you to watch. Previously, we've talked about the mindset and heart set of a Scrum Master, the daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms of a Scrum Master, and we've talked about facilitation. When you're facilitating, you'll run into challenges. And that's what this section is about. It's about how to communicate through conflict. Here's the nitty gritty of what we'll be talking about today. We'll answer the question, why is a practice of communication important? What's the history of nonviolent communication? Nonviolent communication or NVC is the communication practice that I recommend and the one that I use. We'll talk about the key assumptions of NVC, the basic practice and give you some examples. The outcome of this section will be that you'll have a clear understanding of one way to communicate in conflict. So why is a practice of communication important? Because scrum masters are often in conflict, in conflict with themselves, in conflict with others, and witnesses to conflict. Let's talk about each of these in turn. You're in conflict with yourself. What's the difference between being a servant leader and someone who drives the team? You'll find yourself in situations in which you have a variety of emotions and a variety of needs. How do you work through that? You're in conflict with others. You go tell a vice president that they're not following the rules of Scrum. You're in conflict in that conversation and you'll be a witness to conflict. Two team members disagree on something. What do you do in these situations? So what I found is that communicating peacefully without judgment, humiliation, shame, blame is very helpful for Scrum Masters. So that's what this section and what this video is about. One key quote that's used in nonviolent communication is this wonderful quote from the poet Rumi. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. So one key idea in nonviolent communication is that we're not operating from a place of right and wrong. Everyone is doing the best they can to meet their needs. So there is no right and wrong. There are simply observations, feelings, needs, and requests. And what we're trying to do is find a collective action that better meets everyone's needs. So here's a little bit of the history of NVC. It was developed by Marshall Rosenberg. You see a picture of him there on the right. And on the left is a key book, the basic book about NVC, which I'll be using throughout this lecture. Other names for it are compassionate communication or needs-based communication. Here I'm calling it peaceful communication. So here are some of the key assumptions in NVC. All human beings share the same needs. Our world offers sufficient resources for meeting everyone's basic needs. All actions are attempt to meet needs. So whenever you see yourself do something or you see someone else do something, a good question to ask is, what need is trying to be met? Feelings point to needs being met or unmet. If I'm happy, what are the needs that are being met? If I'm angry, what needs are not being met? This is a question that I can ask of myself and of others. All human beings have the capacity for compassion. Human beings enjoy giving. Human beings meet needs through interdependent relationships. Human beings change. Choice is internal and human beings are always in choice. I always have the choice about whether or not to do something. No one can ever force me to do anything. The most direct path to peace is through self-connection. An NVC can be used to communicate with other people and it can be used to communicate with yourself. And in fact, I found that to be the most powerful way to use NVC. So one of the ways that NVC works is by applying what's called OFNR, observations, feelings, needs, and requests in all situations. So observations, they're concrete facts that we observe that affect our well-being. Feelings, how we feel about what we observe. Needs, the needs, values, desires, wants that create our feelings and requests, the concrete actions that we request in order to enrich our lives. And we can talk about giving information, communicating, and also receiving along these four dimensions. So let's talk about these four issues 
in more detail. So here's an example. Suppose there's a thought or judgment that goes like this. Alice is a moron because she does not understand unit testing. She is really hurting the team. That's the way that we might communicate normally. I would call that a violent communication. It contains criticism. It contains blame. It comes from a place of right and wrong. So let's convert that to NVC OFNR. Observations. Alice has not written any unit tests for the past three sprints. The team has ended each sprint with at least 10 known bugs. You see that that's simply a list of facts. Now we can agree or disagree on those facts, but there are no judgments, no opinions, no criticisms in those observations or facts. Feelings. I am very angry and upset. Need. I do not understand Alice's behavior. And here's a request that I could make of Alice. I would like to understand what Alice's thoughts are when she hears me express these feelings. So that's an example of how to convert thoughts and judgments the way that we typically communicate, which I would call violent communication or not peaceful communication, into peaceful communication or NVC OFNR. So here are observations. Observations are unambiguous factual descriptions. In NVC, folks often say it's what the camera would see. Observations do not contain opinions or judgments, analysis or interpretation. So here's an example of an observation. You arrived at 9.03 a.m. The meeting started at 9 a.m. If you say you arrived late, that's not an observation. That's an opinion. So my personal experience is that simply agreeing on the observations is often enough to resolve a conflict or lead to greater understanding. When two people are in conflict, they typically have all sorts of thoughts, beliefs, ideas, opinions. And just drilling through and finding the observations is enormously powerful. Let's talk about feelings. Examples of feelings are affectionate, curious, safe, ecstatic, afraid, angry, devastated, restless, stressed out. Not a feeling. Simply because you use the word feel doesn't mean that it's a feeling. And in fact, you often don't need to use the word feeling when you're actually describing a feeling. I say, I am angry or I am curious, as opposed to I am feeling angry or I am feeling curious. So I feel like a cigarette, that's not a feeling. I feel like you should know better, that's not a feeling. I feel like you should be better prepared for the planning meeting, that's also not a feeling. My personal experience is that we are often unaware of our feelings and the feelings of others, particularly in the workplace. So getting to feelings and recognizing our feelings and guessing at other people's feelings and connecting at the levels of feelings is often difficult. Needs. Needs, examples of needs include acceptance, choice, air, food, shelter, understanding, stability. Here are examples of things that are not needs. I need to watch the football game. I need you to attend the daily stand-up. Those are not needs. Those are not universal things that all human beings have. So my personal experience is that focusing on needs opens up the possibility that there are many ways to meet those needs. For example, I might translate I need to watch the football game into I need entertainment. And now I can imagine many other ways besides watching the football game of meeting that need. And one key thing here is that needs are not connected to people. So needs are universal. My needs are not satisfied by a single person. They can be satisfied in many different ways. So I never say something like, I need my boss to respect me. That's connecting a need to a particular person. Finally, requests. Requests are clear, specific, expressed in positive language. What is it that you want as opposed to what it is that you don't want? And they can be denied. They're not demands. So examples of requests are, would you tell me what you heard me say? How do you feel now that you've heard me say this? Would you be willing to arrive at the stand-up at 9 a.m.? And here are some examples of things which are not requests. You must be at the stand-up at 9 a.m. You need to get the backlog ready before the planning meeting. My personal experience here is that asking someone to just reflect and share what they've heard you say or to talk about what they're feeling or thinking right now is extremely powerful and helpful. Guessing. When someone communicates with you using violence, judgments, opinions, criticisms, you can assist the conversation or support the conversation by simply guessing 
at the observations, feelings, needs, and requests that the person might have. So here's an extended example. Bob says, this sprint backlog is ridiculous. We're never going to be able to finish this. So you start off by guessing at observations. Are you saying that there are more story points in this sprint than there have been in previous sprints? And Bob says, yeah, and the whole situation is so unfair. The product owner is not listening to the team. We're deadline driven. So now you've extracted an observation from Bob's statement. You know that he thinks that there are more story points in this sprint than there were in previous sprints. And now you guess at a feeling. Are you upset? And Bob says, I'm angry and irritated. The PO is not being a PO. Now you guess at needs. You would like the PO to understand what the development team can get done in this sprint. And Bob says, the PO needs to listen to us. He's just blowing us off. And now finally you guess at a request. Would you like to sit down with a PO to revise the sprint backlog? So that's a way that you can use OFNR yourself in a conversation with someone else to structure a judgment criticism into a peaceful or nonviolent form. You can also use NVC for self-connection. The practice of OFNR can be used for self-connection to understand your own feelings and needs. And my personal experience is that this has been the most powerful way to experience NVC. So I simply sit down by myself and I ask, in this situation which I find challenging, what are the observations, feelings, needs, and requests? And always my goal is to move beyond right and wrong and just focus on the needs and the actions to meet those needs. Here are a couple of more opinions. If you're trying to convince someone to do something, then you are being violent. So this very often happens when I talk to managers. Managers are trying to get other people to do something and they think that what they're, those people are doing right now is wrong and they want them to change. Whenever you want someone to change, you're operating from a place of right and wrong. Your goal is not understanding or to be understood. So if you find yourself with that mindset, think about changing it. And if you're trying to tell someone that they are wrong and you are right, then you're also being violent. So again, the focus is on understanding at the level of feelings, needs, and requests. So here are what your next steps are. Watch the next video on OFNR, Observations, Feelings, Needs, and Requests. It'll flesh it out a little bit more. Watch the supplementary videos in this section if you want and do the homework. So to summarize, in this video you have learned why having a practice of communication is of value to a Scrum Master and you have learned about NVC.